let's just so whatever. Hello and welcome to the largest bag I have ever sewn. Uh, this is the largest duffel size, the Swoon Dallas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, cutting this out, I was like, there's no way this thing is that big. It is that big. It's that big, guys. Um, I had a lot of fun making this bag. It was a bit of a challenge to not make it a drop-in lining, and I kind of didn't figure it out. Um, you'll see when we get there. Uh, but I used um, cotton woven fabric that I sell through my fabric website, which is my website, just a fabric tab on my website. Uh, I interfaced it with woven fuse and then I used waterproof canvas. I used vinyl on the side and I interfaced that with foam. So hopefully you can see. Um, oof. Yeah. Here is the bottom of the bag. I used vinyl for these straps. I don't know that I would recommend it. It looks a little weird. Um, along the bottom just because it's super bulky and then something I changed for the lining of the bag is I added these fun slip pockets on the side so I thought that would be kind of a nice division guys <laughs> this bag is massive um I think be a good there we go so these were super simple to add and I think that they kind of you know, help divide the lining up, give you some more room. Um, I don't know that I have a whole lot to say about this bag. It's a well-written pattern. Um, I did it to not be a drop-in lining, but really this bag is so massive that the drop-in lining would not be too difficult. Um, sorry, I had some spare threads. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so I am making the Swoon Dallas in the large duffel size. There's medium and small. We've got our pattern pieces cut out. So I'm modifying it by adding slip pockets to the side panel in the lining. So I went ahead and folded my piece probably three and a half inches down, maybe four, to get this piece of waterproof canvas. Cut two of those. I'm making this cute little keychain to hang on the bag. I decided to interface my side panels with foam only, and then I've got my waterproof canvas times two. Um, and then this is gonna be out of the seam allowance pretty much anyway, so just kind of roughly cut it. Um, I'm going to be using piping that I make out of black glitter vinyl. So I've got my piping and my vinyl. This is two inches wide and 42 inches long. And then I've got two zippers that coordinate. Um, these main panels are flipping ginormous. I don't know if you can see, it's very large. And I have just interfaced this cotton woven with woven fuse. And then I've got one layer of waterproof canvas. And then you cut out two of these giant mofos. So huge. Um, then I've got my lining zippered pocket. And then this is the vertical front pocket, which I believe um, could probably hold like a pair of shoes or something. You could probably make it bigger if you wanted. Um, I'm so sorry this video is moving so much. You're fine though. Uh, we've got our stabilizer cut out and our front straps cut. Um, and then I'm doing something kind of fun on the side panel. So it's supposed to have a strap connector with a D ring for your um, crossbody strap. And what I'm going to do is, I know it's kind of silly because it covers up some of the poison apple right now, but this gets folded in half and then I'm gonna fold this in half also. So that it kind of, I don't know, kind of creates almost like a varsity stripe 
it'll be fun. I'm excited. And then we've got our six inches wide for the crossbody strap, which is gonna be one and a half inch hardware that we need. Um, so let me go ahead and grab my hardware. All right, so for hardware, I'm going to need, um, I think I'm gonna go with black nickel. So I'm gonna grab two one and a half inch black nickel snap hooks. I'm gonna grab one one and a half inch slide adjuster, two one inch D rings, and then for my little keychain, I'm going to grab a half inch black nickel snap hook. Uh, and I, I think that's pretty much it. I'm doing things a little bit out of order from the pattern suggestion, just because I like to get things out of the way before I moved on to constructing the full bag. So I'm going to start with my crossbody strap. This is for a one and a half inch wide crossbody strap. This piece is cut to six inches wide by about 60 long. This is just the, just the width of my fabric. So I'm going to start by folding this raw edge under um, anywhere from one inch to half an inch and pressing. I thought I had enough steam in here, but maybe I don't. Um, and then you're going to fold it in half along the length of your fabric. Definitely want to use quite a bit of steam so that that seam holds. I'm going to have to fill my iron. <laughs> and then I'm going to fold the other end over as well. So just kind of flip it like that and then Fold this long edge under. And this is just so there's no raw edges on your crossbody strap. And it looks nice. So hopefully you can see when you open it up, you've got this nice crisp center seam and you're going to fold the long raw edges of your strap into that. Um, you don't want to overlap it, you just want to touch it with the raw edge. And then repeat that with the other side. You can use double-sided tape for this, but um, if you're using a cotton fabric, it'll fold just fine. center seam and it's going to just enclose all of those raw edges and then I kind of like to pick a side that I want to be the top so I mean this is looking like the better top I'm so not used to one and a half inch wide straps but it definitely distributes the weight of a bag better and that is how you fold a crossbody strap. We're gonna top stitch along all the sides. And if you want to on something this wide, you can even top stitch down the center. I know that there are people that like to add a little bit of fleece to a strap just to give it some padding, but this is the um, cotton woven that's available on my website with one layer of woven fuse and it feels pretty thick. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a little bit of I wouldn't say a puff to it, but it, it feels really nice and sturdy. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this and show you how to finish making the crossbody strap. All right, we've 
we've got it all sewn up. I went ahead and added two lines of stitching just because I, it felt a little loose, I guess. I don't know. You could even add one more line down the center. Just gives it a nice sturdier feeling. Um, I don't know. Personal preference, you do what you like. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it so that the wrong side, wrong side is facing up. And I'm gonna slide my adjuster. I'm gonna take the little center bar and lift it up. Slide my fabric through the bottom side. And then you're gonna push that bar back down and then slide it on top of that bar. So this is what you'll be left with. So this can kind of move freely. And then I'm going to add two parallel lines to top stitch that in place. Um, I've got about three fourths of the fabric looking up at me past that slide adjuster. I'm just gonna take my lighter. Whenever I get like my thread kind of knotted up, instead of picking it out, I just light it and it kind of creates like this, I don't know, it's really secure. Plus it's gonna be hidden. So then I'm gonna flip it back over with the wrong side facing up. And I'm going to take one of my snap hooks so the wrong side is facing up on the table and I've looped it over so that my right side is laying. So there's a big loop here. I'm going to take my snap hook with the snap facing out or up on the right side of the fabric and I'm going to slide that through. So front of my strap and my snap hook are in the same direction. And then I'm going to grab my slide adjuster and push everything down to the bottom and slide this through the top. So the front of the fabric going through the top. And then just kind of pull that pretty far so that you can make sure everything lays flat. You'll have slide adjuster down here and there's the front of my fabric and this is free to be adjusted. So then we're gonna flip this over. So then you're gonna take your strap fully looped, you're going to have the wrong side facing up and you're going to turn it so that it's right side facing up, kind of loop it through the top of the slide and you can kind of push everything down to slide this through. And then make it nice and tight all the way. So you'll see here, you've got your slide adjuster nice and full. You can adjust your bag by kind of messing with this here, slides around, anyway. So then I'm going to flip it over so that this free end with nothing on it is wrong side up. I'm gonna grab my snap hook again with a snap to the outside of the fabric, slide that through and fold it over um, you could fold it over like an inch and a half if you wanted to, but you're gonna sew a box stitch or you could add like four rivets, however you wanna finish this off. But I like to flip it back over. So here's my right side of the strap and I'm going to make a box stitch. So let me get you nice and zoomed in. Okay. So right side facing up. I'm just gonna sew right next to the snap hook along the bottom. Bring it up. And then you can kind of feel where your square bit of fabric ends and you wanna be right next to the end. reaching the corner where I started and that's where I'm going to pivot at a diagonal and sew across to kind of create a box stitch and back stitch and then you can leave it at that or 
Sometimes I like to come up just a little bit and then meet at the opposite corner, add a little back stitch and then go down to the other side. So now you've got this super secure stitch line or lines of stitching. <laughs> I can take my thread zap and really get nice and close to all those threads. Goodbye. You could also use your thread snips and then just kind of hit everything with a lighter. know I love that threads up um, and now your crossbody strap is complete okay so I'm gonna get started on now prepping the large straps that go around the bag I'm pretty sure this pattern is kind of written for webbing not vinyl but I'm gonna go ahead and follow the pattern as I'm instructed um, if I had it my way I would measure the front panel and see how long I needed the connectors and I would create two inch wide pieces to sew onto the front kind of like the Harriet bag or um, if you've ever made the snowdrop something similar to that and then I would create straps that attach to the bag after it's sewn um, I really feel like I should do that but I I also want to see how this goes so I'm calling it now, I will regret this. Um, if you have a domestic machine, I don't know that I would suggest attempting this because you'll be sewing through a lot of vinyl. Um, but my machine should be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with taping it down the center. Using, um, the webbing the pattern suggests would also save you a ton of time so you can choose to do that if you decide to kind of do it the way i'm thinking would be best you would also need a set of square rings one inch square rings sticking the tape. Uh, this is cut to, I believe, 56 inches. Uh, honestly, it's whatever the pattern said I needed to cut is what I cut. So now that I've got my tape removed, I'm going to fold the long raw edges into the center. And this is basically just repeating the steps for the crossbody strap. going to sew this all together at once with a, just a sped up video. Um, I do apologize if you guys get frustrated with that, but I feel like the steps are super repetitive and I don't get to really listen to anything while I'm filming. So when I do those sped up videos, I'm able to listen to some music and help me get through making these bags. I don't know if you've ever sewn in silence, but it's not that fun. <laughs> Okay, 
you just and I like to leave a small gap in between those edges and if you aren't able to fold this over you can use clips like this to help you keep everything straight or you can use a piece of quarter inch wide double sided tape kind of in the center where you're not going to be sewing through it. Um, either of those will help, but I'm going to go ahead and top stitch all of these. Okay, I'm going to move on to the side panels just because if you've watched my videos, you know I like to just get all the bits out of the way. I think it's so much easier to sew it that way. Um, so let's go ahead and make those changes. Uh, so I've got my exteriors here and my linings. I'm going to show you kind of the fun stuff I have planned as far as changes for this. Um, so here's my lining, here's my exterior. And what I thought would be cool is to have side slip pockets inside the bag. So just really quick, I'm going to add these. I'm going to fold down the top raw edge of my waterproof canvas and I'm going to top stitch it and then I'm just going to baste it to the bag. Um, so I'm going to heat up my ironing board with a little bit of steam, lay my waterproof canvas on it just to help loosen it a bit and then you can just fold the edge over a lot easier. Otherwise the waterproof canvas is really stiff and then you can fold it over one more time so that there's no raw edge at the top. I'll go ahead and do that to this one as well. You can iron waterproof canvas directly, but you do risk melting it. So, so I do it this way. So folding it down probably about a half an inch or three eighths. And then you can fold it over again and just kind of reposition those clips. And then I'm going to top stitch. to line up these panels and then just base stitch around the outside edge. Then I'm just going to set that aside. I'm not going to need it for quite some time. But again, it's easier when you get to the end. Maybe you've been working on your bag a long time and you're getting frustrated. It's easier to just have all the small pieces out of the way. Um, especially if you come back to your project later, you're less likely to have lost something if it's sewn to something else. that side is finished as well. If you have something in mind that's going to go in them, you could even divide it a little bit if you needed to, but I think this is a great size. Maybe if you wanted to put a pair of shoes in there or dirty underwear, whatever. You've got a pocket. Okay, so my thoughts for the side panel. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm going to Okay, hold on. 
I've cut this piece that is six inches wide by 24 inches long. I've interfaced it with woven fuse and I'm going to fold it in half, kind of like a, the straps. I'm just gonna lightly press it and then I'm gonna fold my raw edges in towards the center and I'm going to use my iron to press that. Well, this is working. No, I'm gonna iron it and steam. This is not in the pattern. This is just my brain thinking it would be fun to add a little something to the side panels on the exterior. Okay, yes. All right, I'm gonna cut this in half. Doesn't have to be super precise. Okay, and then I was thinking it would be cool to sew these onto the center of the side panels. There's a little bit of extra at the top and the bottom, but just kind of even it out a little bit. It's just in the seam allowance, so it's not the end of the world. And then I'm going to sew down the sides of each one. I've got a stitch length of five. Next stitch. And this will kind of help compress your interfacing too, if you have any. Um, I have foam on my side panels because I didn't use the fleece on any parts of the bag. And I want the sides of this bag to really stand up on their own. I just thought that it might give the bag a bit more of a retro feel to have like this varsity stripe almost. I don't know, man, just having fun. going to grab the actual strap connectors. These are 12 inches as well. I'm going to use some double-sided tape to fold the raw edges in. And this same um, technique is what I would have used for the front panel if I weren't changing the pattern that much or if I were changing the pattern that much, you would just use the same method, especially with vinyl. Okay, folding that long raw edge in. And these can kind of butt up against each other since they're not being folded in half again. double-sided tape. This time I'll go ahead and use quarter inch wide. Just lay it down the back center so that you're not sewing through it. And I'm not placing it all the way down, just most of the way down. So I'll grab my one inch D-rings. And it says we're gonna fold this edge under by one inch. So I'm gonna peel my tape off and hope that I placed it well enough that it catches. Otherwise, you know what? 
I'm just gonna do an inch and a half because it's not gonna be the end of the world. But see how that looks? Yay! Oh, it turned out so cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm folding it under an inch and a half. I wanted to add more rivets and stuff anyway, so. It'll be fine. Inch and a half. And then I like to just double check that everything lines up. And if it doesn't, just kind of readjust. Cool. That looks good. Okay, so this is, yeah, three inches wide, which means you're going to have an inch showing on either side. So to center it up, I'm just laying my one inch ruler along the edge. Pressing that into place. Da, cool. Peeling off my tape. Again, one inch along the edge. Lining that up. And that double-sided tape is gonna help stick it in place. And we're gonna top stitch. still have my stitch length set to five. I'm gonna go on the bottom side. Then when you get close to the connector, you'll turn. And then to protect my hardware, I'm using a scrap of leather. And back down the other side. And then if you aren't using rivets, you can sew a box stitch just like we did on the crossbody strap along this area, but I'm just gonna add two rivets to give it a nice chunky hardware look. If you wanted to be more decorative, you could add more than two rivets. You could just make them for show than functional and go like all the way down every like three inches or something like that, that would be really fun. Ran out of bobbin. Good thing I'm using a matching thread. Okay, and so instead of cutting my top thread, since I ran out of bobbin, I'm just gonna pull my thread back through my machine, kind of line it up a a two stitches back and go forward and back stitch to lock that in place and continue on. And then you can barely see where I ran out, which is nice. So I'll go ahead and mark out, I'm adding a rivet here and here, here, and here. And I'm just making sure that I'm going through the fabric that's underneath, otherwise it's kind of pointless. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those off camera and then we will get started on making the piping for our bag to finish out these side panels. All right, so for this bag, I'm going to be making my own piping out of this black glitter vinyl. I am using um, this cotton piping. This can be found in the upholstery aisle of like Joann's or something like that. I got mine from FM stores in Springfield. What I'm going to do, and you can use tape for this if you want, but I'm just gonna kind of use my hands. You're gonna line this up in the center a little bit hanging out and fold it over and you'll see it kind of encases it within the edge and you're going to start stitching here to lock this in place and then stitch just right up against your piping. Okay. 
My stitch length is still cut to, cut to, set to five. And again, so I've got this little bit of tail hanging out. I'm going to start by sewing over that. Otherwise your piping could kind of slip through and that's definitely not what you want. Um, I've cut my vinyl a little wider than I actually need it to be. You wanna end up with like a half inch seam allowance, but I'm just gonna trim mine down. So I'm pulling on the piping, pulling it over. You do not wanna sew through your piping or too close to the edge because then you don't have like enough space to baste it to your bag, etc. You can even elongate your stitch length a little more if you want to so it goes a little faster. And then you'll see I have a little bit of extra piping down at the bottom. And again, I just want to sew over that so it doesn't slip through. So now that I'm at the end, I'm kind of sewing through that piping. See, we've got like an inch hanging over the edge. I'm just gonna trim this down. Yeah, there we go. So if you wanted to cut this to 1.7 inch wide, that would probably be better. You'd have less to trim down, but I didn't want I'd rather be safe than sorry, especially with something I have a lot of. Okay. So this is my pre-made piping. I'm gonna go ahead and do time-lapse for the other side since you've seen me do this one. Now it's time for one of my favorite things, which is piping. So I'm gonna grab my side panel. I'm gonna fold it in half so I can mark the bottom center. Uh, I don't really need the top center. So I'll go ahead and mark the center of this side too. For the piping, I'm going to start with the edge that I enclosed first, and you're just going to kind of turn it at an angle a little bit and start clipping. What's nice about using glitter vinyl is it's all going to stick to itself, so it makes my job a little bit easier. Um, I think I've seen that Jessica Cruzon of Sodakine, she'll use um, rubber cement to hold things in place. So if that works for you, by all means try it. Um, and then to kind of help turn in the curve, you can clip it a little bit. So again, I'm kind of reaching that curve. I'm just gonna add a few little snips. You don't wanna, you don't wanna clip too far into your fabric or it could show up later. I don't know where I got this clip, but I love it every time I see it. 
I think of the sewing retreat. Okay, I'm gonna clip up here. And you should have a little bit of your piping overlap. That is good because we're going to kind of at the center overlap them. Uh, so I'm going to start sewing at that center so that I can hold that in place. Hopefully you guys can see kind of, it's kind of like having your arms crossed at that center. And I still have my stitch length set to pretty wide. Uh, right now it's at a six. Again, I just want that to keep the same seam allowance, but trail off. It's a delicate balance. Delicate. I got it, I got it, I got it. And you want to sew right, you want to sew just past your basting stitch for the piping. So this is like a second basting stitch, essentially. Just to creep in tighter to that piping. And then if you're using regular cotton piping, you can sew around the outside edge to keep it from lifting. And then I'm going to trim off all this extra piping down here. There is our side panel. So it should be when I sew in closer to this piping, I'll catch this part too. Let's see how it looks down here. Oh yeah, we're good. And then now that you've seen the one side, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the other side just so this video isn't a million years long. Okay, we're finally going to get started on the front panel. Yes, this is the front panel. It's massive, so massive, like it's bigger than my sewing machine table even is. So, whew, this is my front pocket. I've gone ahead and kind of done it my normal zipper pocket way where I'm going to sew my fabrics together with the pocket on the front. Uh, my pocket's going to be a little bit shorter because I am changing up the measurements, but you can follow the way the pattern says to do it, but this is going to be so much easier. So if anything, just add three extra inches to this pocket and it'll be what it should be. So our box, it says should be four inches from the side. So. There's my four inches from the side and then three inches from the top. So I'm going to slide this up. Almost. Okay. So that is where I want my zipper pocket on the front of this bag to be. And the reason I made it closer to the edge is so I can clip it and kind of help keep everything 
together. So I'm gonna fold this in half, kind of clip it together. And this is along the side edge of my main panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and shorten my stitch length to about 4.5. And I'm just gonna sew my two parallel lines to make a zippered pocket. And back stitch and then turn. And then back stitch and go forward. And back stitch. There we go. So then I'm going to clip this open. it at the corners I've hit one too many staples with this pair of scissors I can feel it so I'll unclip it and then I'm going to turn this through um, I'm gonna go ahead and steam my waterproof canvas so that it turns a little better And then I'm going to press it from the exterior fabric. Um, I would say that this pocket could be optional, but it does look really cool. Um, so it's your call. I think it'd be kind of neat to put like a pair of shoes in it or something like that, like a little pair of flats. So then I'm gonna grab my zipper. Um, I think you want the pull at the very top. So then it um, zips down. Um, if you wanted to add a vinyl overlay to this, that would look pretty cool. But you know, do what you want. Do whatever you want. Okay. I don't know why, I just like to have the zipper end. But I'm going to start at the bottom side normally I like to start over here but there's just way too much fabric with a zipper not somewhat attached so I'm starting on the looser end my stitch length is still set to 4.5 I'm just gonna sew along the edge And then I'm turning everything, but you want to make sure you bring your zipper pull into the fabric. There we go. So I like to get everything situated and then unzip my zipper a little bit so that my foot can make it over all of that. Situate all those layers, make sure your fabric is laying flat, the zipper looks good. This is like a high stakes zipper pocket. And then sew along the bottom. 
And then if you wanted to, you could add um, an extra box stitch around the outside edge, personal preference, whatever you're in the mood for. Or if you messed up, <laughs> Or if you aren't a fan of any of your stitching at this point, you could um, add a vinyl overlay. So I'm just gonna double check from this side that I caught all of my zipper tape. Nothing looks like it's going to kind of break over time. Cut your extra zipper. If you want to keep this for something you can, uh, I don't know. I'll just throw it away. Can't see myself using it. And then you're going to fold your zipper pocket back over on itself. Clip everything together. And then flip it so the exterior fabric is facing up. Start where it's folded over, stitch length of four or 3.5. And then just sew around every bit of it. I have this extra bit of fabric. You won't have this. My pocket is now a lot shorter than anybody else's is gonna be, but I'm going to baste it into my side seam so that that pocket is stabilized. what it looks like from this side. You could even cut it even wider. You could add like two zippered pockets that are two separate or you can make it the same kind of like a kangaroo zipper pocket. You know, have fun with it, do whatever. But let's see if it fits in her shoes. I'm just curious. I wear a size 10 and a half. This bag is probably going to be for me because I can tell I already messed up on the side panel, but yeah, it would have fit a pair of shoes if I hadn't messed it up. I mean, if it's one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to really quick use this similar method to add a zipper pocket to my lining. I'm going to speed that up and then we'll move on with um, adding our front straps. Okay, so what I did was I added a 10 inch zippered pocket to the main panel. I left the bottom open so we can berth the bag through this hole. See how we can reach through. Perfect. So next we are going to add the straps to the front of the bag. Okay, so to measure this out, it needs to be nine inches from each outer edge. So I'm going to take my little ruler and measure nine inches on the top and the bottom. Six, three, there is nine. And I'm going to fold that line. Kind of making sure that the bottom is lined up and the top is lined up so that it's nice and straight and I'm just slightly creasing that 
And then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So there's my six, and there is my nine. Although I guess I technically have nine inches here, so I could just fold it, but whatever. Six and nine. Oh no, it's different. Okay, cool. So again, fold that, pinch it. That's nice and straight. And give it a little crease. Okay, so I can see my two nine inch marks here. I'm gonna really quick take my one inch double sided tape. I'm gonna lay that over the nine inch mark. take one of our pre-made straps or you can take your um, whatever it's called I can't think of it right now my brain is not webbing you can take your webbing and lay it over top so I'm gonna peel off this double-sided tape Easier said than done. There we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. It's like, I know it's stuck. And I'm gonna center that over it. Push it. Nice and flat. Repeat on this side. that you want to top stitch all of that down except for three inches I believe yeah three inches from the very top of your bag um, So that's right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of mark it with my um, Tandy Leather marking pencil. This is like, basically like a chalk pen, just something that wipes away. And I'm gonna top stitch from the bottom down, yeah. And that tape is gonna help keep everything together whilst I'm doing it. And I'm gonna come in about an eighth of an inch from my existing stitch line, just so I'm not like perforating the vinyl and it kind of gives it more of a decorative touch than uh, anything else. I'm getting to that mark, so I'm just gonna turn. I'm gonna add a little bit of a back stitch. And then again, keeping up with that eighth of an inch from the outer edge. It's not too bad. It looks really cool. <laughs> 
This is definitely the biggest bag I've ever made. This is massive. And then I'm going to add two sets of rivets just like I did on the side connectors. I'm going to add it here and here, here, here. So they're about an inch apart and um, probably a quarter of an inch from my top stitching. So uh, if you wanted to, you could add decorative um, rivets all the way down that would look super cool very industrial i don't know uh, so i'll go ahead and add my rivets and then we're going to work on the other side while you're working on the other side that's the one with the zipper you want to make sure that you're flipping your zipper pocket out of the way so i am going to speed that up again i don't want this video to be hours and hours long or i can't upload it so i'm going to add rivets and then we'll breeze through uh the rest of the other side. Okay, so at this point I've got my main panels finished, my exteriors are ready to go. I've also got my interfacing cut out. I wrote the instructions on it. <laughs> um, and then we are going to work on the zipper. So, a lot of people have asked me to try and do this without the drop-in, so I think I've figured it out. We're gonna be testing it together, so if it doesn't work out, please don't kill me. Um, so I've got this piece cut one and a half by six inches. I'm gonna cut this in half. I've got my exterior and my lining. Let's see how this goes. All right, so we are going to do our best to not make this bag a drop-in lining. I have kind of brainstormed how to do it and I think I figured it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and baste my zipper onto the front panel. And you definitely want to baste your zipper on. If you don't, it's gonna end up wonky because it's such a large piece. What I'm not going to do is I am not going to, um, hold on, we'll get there in a second. So go ahead and baste your zipper in place all the way down. Face, teeth facing the bag. And this may end up being more trouble than it's really worth because the drop-in on this lining uh, would be a lot easier than most drop-ins. But we'll see. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my lining without a pocket. I like to have the pockets on opposite sides. This bag is just massive. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna lay those right sides together. I'm clipping from the opposite side. Now see, if you didn't baste your zipper, you'd have to wrestle with this many layers and trying to keep it straight. So. Okay, 
Okay. So I am only going to sew half an inch from each side. Like in between half an inch from each side. So I'm gonna quickly mark that out. Um, no, make it three fourths of an inch just in case. So three fourths of an inch from each side. So that way when I go to add the side panels, I've got plenty of room to work with. And then coming in quite a bit. mark and then I'll press it open from the lining side and I'm going to top stitch again avoiding half an inch from the side so I'm going to press this really quick Top stitching, I'm avoiding like that half inch. And then I'm just pulling to separate the layers. Stitch length of five or 4.5. You wanna move your handles out of the way. that it was gonna happen soon. But we're not gonna worry because we know how to hide the bobbin marking. Let's pull up on that. Just go back to where we started. other side. Clip my extra threads. And then I'm going to make sure that my zipper is free as well as so all three of those pieces are free except for what is top stitched. Just kind of unpick that basting stitch. Okay, and then what I've top stitched is gonna hold all that in place. Oh, let's hope it works. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my other exterior main panel. heavy and massive and oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know that I would recommend making the large version of this to start, but here I am doing it anyway. So I'm going to line up my main panels on the side and then again just start basting. I figure it'll be easier for me to kind of hold everything together here and just take it section by section rather than trying to straighten it all out at once.
stopped basting at that half inch mark. And then I'm gonna grab my other main lining panel with my zipper at the top, my zipper pocket, and then I'm just gonna clip it in place on the other side. that all together. Again, half an inch or three-fourths of an inch or so from the side. up and poof top stitch again <laughs> there is absolutely no way I could ever ship this for a reasonable price and like keep the bag in in shape I just like slowly pull the layers apart. Um, I should probably top stitch this way and I can roll up the side that I've completed. So it's kind of roll it up like a yoga mat. gonna end that top stitching and around the same point. Okay. So because these panels here are supposed to be um touching each other and you're supposed to see like just a sliver of your zipper, we have to account for what is showing of our zipper into the bottom seam. So I think I'm going to need to use like a, a one inch seam allowance to attach these bottoms so that my side panels fit correctly, uh, which honestly isn't too big of an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and match up my vinyl which again is super thick. So using webbing definitely is a good option or even just interfaced cotton. Oh my gosh, why did that scare me?
so honestly, yeah, like a one inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark it out really quick. There we go. Stitch length of four since I'm working with cotton. And if you've got a large height difference you're working on, uh, you can get like a Gina Majig or a hump jumper, they call it. And just remember, it's easier to walk up a hill than it is to run. So, kind of working my way slowly through it. Come on. Here we go. I'm going from no layers of vinyl to like eight layers of vinyl. So that's why my machine is like, what is happening? And I'm going to repeat that on the bottom of the lining, but we are going to leave a pretty large chunk in the lining open, but I do want to sew maybe four inches of each side together so that it's easier to berth this bag. So a little bit wider than a one inch seam allowance, but not much. chunk open. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so the hardest part is going to be the exterior main panel. So I'm going to start with those. So let's get our piped side panels out and ready to go. I'm going to start by lining up the bottom center marks. Uh, the construction of this bag is pretty similar to the Blanche barrel bag. So if you've ever made that, you should have no problem making this bag. other than the sheer monstrous size of it. Okay, so it helps to mark the top center as well. Give it a little snip, give it the old snipperoo. The side panel would be a lot easier to add if I hadn't used foam as well, but I wanted it to have a nice shape. So, had to do it. Um, adding a zipper tab, which is my first thought would have helped immensely, but what I was thinking didn't quite work out and my brain is too tired to figure something else. Um, so just kind of work your way along the curve on the top and the bottom first. So I'll start with the bottom. Lots of clips. Whoops. You might need a stapler, might not. No, we should be good. So yeah, everything is fitting nicely, at least on this side with that one inch seam allowance. So if you're doing our, the zipper this way, just kind of keep that in mind. what we want to make sure we do is fold this lining out of the way when we're sewing it together. So it's going to be tricky, but we're going to go ahead and start at that top so I can fold my lining out of the way. So hopefully you can see I've got my zipper clipped to the exterior 
and my lining folded out of the way so that we don't catch it. out of the way. My stitch length is set to four and let's go. So right now, what am I hitting? I think I'm hitting the metal tab on the zipper. Yep. Okay, great. So already my top is gonna to be messed up because if you can see this second stitch line, my side accent piece wasn't enough. And I'd rather hide that than worry about my typing, my piping at the top. So it is what it is, that's my fault. I should have cut it a little longer or centered it a little bit better, but that's okay. And we want to sew about a, an eighth of an inch in from our stitch line. So hopefully this will be a good visual. This is our outer basting stitch. This is where we basted that piping. And this is where we want to sew along so that it's right up against that piping. Give it a nice snug fit. And you can kind of feel it with your finger as well. rotating kind of feeling the under fabric with my finger so that it doesn't pucker I have a feeling it's going to just based on um, the interfacing difference I probably should have used two layers of woven fuse but I was just thinking about the overall shape of the bag and it is a duffel bag so you want it to be able to be compact, you know, you don't want it to be super rigid like a the bowler bag or anything like that. Again, we want to make sure we're moving our lining out of the way. Right here, it's gonna get a little weird for me because I wanna catch the stitch. But just make sure you're folding your lining out of the way. And then make sure you don't hit that zipper end. Okay, so I'm just gonna check on it. open this panel and look in and see how it's sewed. Yeah, I definitely lost my top piping, but everywhere else looks pretty good. Um, let's see if I can kind of move the camera around to show you guys. So I'm not sure if you can see at the very top of the bag, I personally lost the piping. I'm not mad about it. I don't mind that so long as I've caught 
that accent fabric. Watch like I didn't. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. So much fabric, but it looks super cool. All right, so let's go ahead and start on the other side. All right, sorry. So you wanna make sure that you unzip your zipper a little bit so that you're not sewing through your zipper tab or anything like that, your zipper pull, I mean. And then again, we're just coming in a little ways from the outer edge. And slowly around to kiss that piping. Mwah. And I am sewing through my pocket panel, but only because I want to uh, just make sure it's not like saggy in the bag, you know? And then I was gonna try and replicate um, like the missing piping at the top of the bag on the other side. I'm just not gonna worry about it. It's gonna look fine. Maybe I can accidentally do it, who knows. So again, my hand is underneath the bag here, pushing my lining out of the way. And then trailing off. I do not feel like I'm gonna need to cut my seams down, um, maybe on the bottom if you really wanted to, but I'm, I'm probably not going to. We do need to add some interfacing to the bottom exterior and I was gonna try and like sew it into the bottom, but I think I might just nix it all together. I don't know. This bag is just so flipping massive. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and unzip my zipper all the way. Good golly, I could get like seven giant cats in here. Like you don't even know. All right, I'm just checking on my other panel to make sure I caught everything. I mean, it looks good. Yeah, I think it looks good. I've just got some spare fabric. I, I don't wanna like, not necessarily ruin the surprise, but I don't wanna see it yet just cause I'm super excited. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and clip one of the side panels. I'm gonna mark my centers, fold it in half, snip, snip. This is, um, so I think maybe the second or third time I made a Blanche Barrel bag, I tried a method similar to this, but it didn't work because I didn't take into account that my zipper would take up space along the outer curve. So I'm excited to see how this turns out. And I assume before you're watching this, I will have mentioned how it turned out, so. Hopefully it's okay. So where my lining is, because I don't have the zipper to hold it together, I'm just kind of pinching it together. I'm gonna clip that in place. And then just like with the outside of the bag, slowly working that curve together kind of pinching it all together So there's our panel attached. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold my lining, not my lining, my exterior out of the way and start at my lining top. I'm gonna use a little bit more than half an inch seam allowance only because I know I did on the exterior. That and you want your lining to fit nice and snug. Clipping as I go. Wouldn't hurt to staple this. Now I'm gonna trim my excess seam allowance around that curve. You can do this for your exterior if you would like. I'm not even gonna try, honestly. long at the top because I'm thinking about sewing that together but I think it'll I think it'll turn out the end oh yeah that's right I just have that one more side to do so I'll go ahead and speed that one up Okay, so now we are ready to birth the bag. I'm gonna pull it through the opening we left in the lining. I'm gonna start with one of these completely overly interfaced flap side bits. I don't know, maybe I'll think differently when it's done. While I'm here, I'm just checking my side panels to make sure I didn't miss any part. Looks okay. There is this hole here. We're going to address it, so don't think you messed up. Or don't feel like you messed up anyway. Here is the side where the piping was eaten. That's okay. I mean, I'm not super happy about it, but it happens. And at least, um, I just, I really didn't want this to fray. You know, I worked so hard to make that look cool. So you win some, you lose some, right? Okay, so I'm going to turn my zipper pocket out. I'm gonna grab the lining parts I left open. If you're gonna add stabilizer, now would be the time to do it.
And if you're making this bag with very little interfacing, you could probably just turn it through a really big pocket that you left open, but. I don't usually make duffel bags, I make handbags, so I wasn't sure. So I'm just gonna start on my existing line of stitching. Pull these together. Using my same stitch length. your bag. Oh my god, this is so massive. Wow. Wowie, wowie, wow. I'm pretty tempted to keep this actually. And then we're gonna sew up this lining pocket. This would be a perfect time to use one of my tags and say I took forever to make it. But I'm just gonna use my Let Me Know tag. And what the heck, I have an I'm Him Crafted Take Care of Me to it. original thought for this bag was to have a small zipper tab or basically like a zipper panel like the backpacks do um, so that way when you're done you just stitch across the top here to close that off so even just a small zipper tab this is what I had originally planned was to have a little zipper panel like this. But I kind of messed up what I was thinking and decided my brain was hurting and I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I'm a little bummed that I didn't do what I originally planned to do um, because now I have this hole here, but you can just whip stitch that by hand or tack it down with your machine. Ooh, I love those side pockets though. Okay. Oh, Lord. put a freaking dead body in that. All right, you guys. So here is the finished bag. Here's my little boo-boo. It's not super bad, but it's pretty bad. I absolutely love the way the side panel came out. Um, I'm now glad I added foam because it really does help give the bag some more shape. Um, I do not regret not adding foam but you definitely could. Um, yeah, so as I explained just a few seconds ago, my plan was to add a little tab that you tack down. I'm gonna include what I was thinking at the end of this video, so maybe you can get an idea. Um, but I wanted to sew that so it would be the exact same length of the zipper, but instead what I did was I sewed it directly to the end, so I wanted it to be here so that way you would have just this tiny little piece right here that you needed to tack down. Kind of like when we sew up the Kalani backpack or I mean any backpack that I've done. So I wanted to do something pretty similar. 
here is the front of the bag. Got a nice zipper pocket here. Goes pretty far. Um, I think it's supposed to kind of go past this one, but again, I used up a couple inches. I've got a little tiny pucker right here. I'm human, things happen. But here is that side panel. Hi. <laughs> I'm really happy with how the piping turned out. It looks just as I imagined. Um, and then we've got our crossbody strap that we can attach. Beautiful set. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you attempt to make this bag if you are in need of an overnight bag. Um, it's, this is whole, this is huge. It's huge, it's over two feet long, so or maybe just at two feet long. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And I'll see you next time, bye. Okay, so let's hope it works out. I am going to start by cutting these two in half. So you want it to be three inches long. Ish. One each. Let me iron my zipper really quick. I'm using the exact length of zipper that this calls for, 24 inches. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put these right sides together over the zipper tape, but I'm not going to sew them completely on. I'm basically just going to tack it into place. We're gonna leave half an inch open on either side. So again, just tacking it into place. Okay. So it, it is still well connected, especially at the center of the zipper, but if I need to push them out of the way, I can. So, we're gonna see how this goes. It worked in my head. <laughs> so lining side on the back of the zipper and the front on the front of the zipper. Honestly, the drop-in lining on this bag wouldn't be too difficult. You've got a nice big workspace. So, wait. No, this is not what I wanted to do. Is it? If I'm using the exact length I needed, I wanted to do it so it was a shorter zipper on the top. So I wanted to sew it. This is fine. No, it's not fine. Hold up.